Good morning. Welcome back to Parsnips and Parsimony. Today I am working more on my garden. It's just before Memorial Day weekend and the garden needs to get finished being put in. Not everything's going to be able to go in. My eggplant babies that I started inside are not quite big enough, but this morning I went up to my third floor and I am so glad that I did keep some of my vegetable garden books. I never dreamed that the library would be closed so much during this time. So I went upstairs, I dug out some of my vegetable books, my gardening books. I'll show you what I have here and which ones that I have used for years and years and years. I know a lot of you guys are starting uh, vegetable gardening this year or you want to take it to a whole new level. I have two books that I recommend. Um, this one, Garden Ways Joy of Gardening by Dick Raymond is an outstanding practical source of gardening. So what I just did is I sat down here and I wanted to look up peppers and that's kind of like what I'm working on right now is should I plant my peppers right now or not? So I gotta get to the pepper section here. There we are. And I just went through and read. I love how this is very short, it's concise, it's easy to understand. I mean, this is this is this is what you need to know. Pinterest, you know, Pinterest is good for fresh ideas, but this this is tried and true wisdom. So I went through and read what he suggested for planting depth, um, how they should be spaced apart, and then he had some tips here with Epsom salt and some matches. And it just was really, really helpful. He's got a whole lot more resources in the book, in this book. Hey, rhubarb, we love rhubarb. Um, so this is my first book. If you have any opportunity to get this, get this book. It's so easy to understand. Again, not sponsored. You look at this book. This is probably from the 70s, 80s would be my guess. Let me see. Apparently there used to be a gardening show called The Joy of Gardening. I don't ever remember seeing it. There it is, 1982. Okay, not sponsored. <laughs> the other book, years and years ago, when I was a young person, I had gone to our library, which was a rare occurrence when I was a kid, and I found this book, Down to Earth Vegetable Gardening, and I just devoured the entire book. And at the time, it was just as beat up as it is right now. You can see it has been well loved. Um, and so we asked the library, we said, you know, this book is really beat up. Could we, would you be interested in selling it to us? And they said, yeah, we, you know, we'll sell that to you. So I think we paid 50 cents or a dollar for this book. And I, this has been my number one book that started it all for me for gardening. This is also by Dick Raymond. So he's the same guy that did the first book. This is a more clear, um, not clear, but a shorter abbreviated version of the other book. So if you really need a beginner, beginner, beginner guide, start here. This is a great book to start with. It covers pretty much everything that you need in a much shorter way. I think this one's actually from the 70s, if I remember. Let's see. Look at that, 1975. So this is an oldie but goodie. It, I, I will probably never get rid of it. <laughs> I just absolutely love this book. And then the last book that I have just added to my collection is How to Grow More Vegetables. And I haven't had as much experience with this book, but I brought it down today to look through it and see what they had and if they had any information on peppers and potatoes That's and things huge. like that. Look how huge that is. Oh, that is a huge sunflower head. So one of the books had a optimum soil temperature for peppers. Peppers being, they really, 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 really like 65 degrees. So I have my handy dandy cooking thermometer. Hey, anything works. Excuse me, Daniel. Hello. And we're going to go test the soil and see what temperature it is. I have no idea if it's made it to 60 or not or if it's still in the 50s. Okay, here we go, guys. We're going to stick it in the soil and see what temperature the soil is. How long will it take to go? No, not too long. 63, 62. Yeah, food. All right, so that's 61 degrees there. Move it back here. We'll see if it's all 61 degrees. Oh, a little bit colder there. 
Okay. Okay, Lily, come over here. This is another place where we're going to put our peppers. Can I and stab it in the soil. Go ahead, Can stab I it stab in. It? Push it right down. And Can let's I see what it? the temperature is. You got it in there? Can okay. I stab it? Okay, and this over here says it's about 60 degrees. Oh, it might get a little colder than 60. Okay, what's the temperature over here? It's giving up. Oh, it's only 58 over here. 59, 58, <laughs> it's fickle. All right, so not as warm as I would like. I'm gonna check this other book here and see what the temperature was supposed to be. So it says peppers here need to have a minimum soil temperature of 60 degrees. We're really, really close to that. And then the optimum range is 65 to 95 with uh, its favorite temperature at 85. So these are the pepper plants that I grew from seed. These are some of my best looking pepper plants ever. Look, they're, they're nice, they're stocky. So these guys are definitely ready to go in. I think, I don't know, I might put them in today. I'm not sure. Um, that soil's pretty close to it. And then these are the eggplants. These guys are definitely not ready to go in. I planted them about two weeks behind these days because I hadn't had my seeds yet. But they're getting there. They're slowly getting there. And then over here, the tomatoes are looking, they're kind of looking funny, but this is a new variety of tomatoes. So I'm thinking it might just be the variety that I got. Who knows? Look at my thyme. It's flowering. I never knew thyme flowered. Isn't that pretty? I wonder when you're supposed to harvest this. Huh. I should probably look that up and see when this needs to be harvested. All right, according to the farmer's almanac, you want to harvest just before it starts flowering. So I guess if I want to harvest it, I should actually start harvesting it now. And then it says to harvest and store there. Um, you can dry it in the dark, well-ventilated area, or you can just dry them by leaving them on a tray. Once dry, store them in an airtight container, crush before using. What's that? Thyme. The thyme is just starting to flower, so I guess we need to pick it. Thyme. Thyme. Yes, like the herb thyme. Thyme. Not thyme. Not clock thyme. So I watched some videos, and apparently this, <laughs> this thyme looks pretty sad. But I'm going to go ahead and trim it so it can get a little bit more bushy. I think that would probably be the best course of action for it. Can I see and um, we'll what? just we'll What's dry that? what we have. We'll what use happened? it. Um, it, it just died from winter, and that's okay, Mary. We'll just trim it up, get it looking a little bit healthier, and well, Can I take one, leaf, um, one? one little tiny leaf right there. That's parsley. There you go. Yum. This I cook, is good. I cooked that in pizza, kiddo. Hmm. Can we have some of this for pizza? Maybe. Hmm. trimmed some of it. I took out the dead stuff and I took a little bit here. I will weigh that and dry that. And then Mary picked some parsley here for our pizza this afternoon. Yeah, on a hot day, the plants look like they were laser to yeah, Stay on the path, please. Yep, I am. And you can water all this, all the all the dirt here because those are all seeds, Mary. Mommy planted some basil and parsley and flowers, so go ahead and water Thanks, those up Mom. real good. Now as good as and the oregano is doing really, really well. So we have pizza going today. I'm going to pick some of that fresh for our pizza. And while I was outside gardening, I just got part of our homeschool book. Oh, I'm so For all of you guys, I am so excited. Oh, I love fresh books. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> Quarter ounce of herbs. Wow. Oh wait, 521 herbs, thyme, parsley, it's mid-afternoon and I thought I'm going to recheck the temperatures to see how much the soil temperature goes up and I'm thinking it might be warm enough just Today, I mean, today it's in the mid 70s. So let's stick this back in here and see what it says.
In this spot, this is the one that Mary got, was it 58 or 59 degrees? And it definitely went up, so. So I think that answers my question. I'm, the soil seems like it's ready now. And we'll go ahead and get these peppers in. First set of peppers are all planted. We're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and put some grass clippings around them, give these a good watering, but they look really healthy. The paper is for cutworms. I'll talk about that a little bit. And the matches are, well, because the book said it was really good for them. For each pepper, what I'm doing is I'm putting two or three matches in the hole. Now, according to that book that I was showing you guys earlier, uh, the plants really like the sulfur. And I did this years and years ago, but I haven't done it in several years. In the years that I did it, I remember we had great peppers. So I'm excited to try that again. And then I'm just using some newspaper to wrap around the plant to make paper coll collars for cutworms and hopefully protect these little plants before they can get big enough. So all of the peppers are planted. These guys are banana peppers over here. And then right here in this middle plot, I have green peppers. Not as many green peppers as jalapeno peppers though. These are all jalapeno peppers. They're looking a little wilty. I just give them a nice big drink of water and we'll have to water them for a couple days. But you can see how I took the grass clippings. Just put them around the plants. That'll help later on in the summer, weeds, but also help with the moisture and the heat and keeping those roots nice and cool for the peppers. Peppers get a little finicky as it gets really hot. They won't set the fruit or they won't have flowers that will make fruit. And if you have a really hot summer, at least here in our zone, we just don't get the peppers like I would like. Hey, kiddo. Where's Elsa's? Yay. Yay. But it's something. Yeah, and it's upside down for their viewers. <laughs> Two and three quarters ounces. Yeah, the, this is the... kale and spinach, mostly spinach. Yes, mostly and spinach. This is the kale. We're going Maybe to put that kale. in our our uh, salad. No, I'll go wash that up. We'll let it crisp in the refrigerator before dinner. Came around the back of the the back of the um, barn here, and who's escaped the coop but the baby chicken? So. I gotta get them back in the coop. There's 
naughty little chickens. Yeah, we'll have to do something about her. All right, I don't think I showed you guys what we did last night in the garden. I built this with the girls the other day. We actually disassembled an old pallet and the girls and I built that. How cool is that? And then Art helped last night get some chicken wire on it. And then we took the two pallets that were partly disassembled. Can you plant some seeds? Not right now, honey. And we took those plants and we took those pallets and then we just put more chicken wire on them. So what we have here, cucumbers here, and then around the back side, because there's free planting, we put in carrots and lettuce. Okay, sweetheart, leave those, that bucket here. That's daddy's bucket for the weeds. Yes, please leave it there. Thank you. And then here we put in more pea, um, cucumbers there. We didn't plant anything back here. I don't know what we're going to do here. And then the last section I have is right here. The garlic has grown unbelievable. I have never, ever in my life had garlic like this. So I'm really hopeful this is going to be a great... Yes, you did. Jillian, look what I found. Right here. Do you know what that is right there? What? It's a little baby pea plant. Okay. Oh, and there's more pea plants over here. Look. Lily, look. They're just popping up. Yay! That's a big one, Yeah, these are little pea plants. See, there's another one down there. They're coming. I spent the afternoon, part of the afternoon, reading the um, Garden Way Joy of Gardening by Dick Raymond. He has so many, so many wonderful hints and tips. And I just, I love how down to earth it is. And really can't recommend that book enough. And I think we got another egg. So I'm going to check the chickens before we go in. <gasps> Guess what, Lily? We got another egg. We got one from the blue green one. Yay. And it's fresh too. All right. Thank you. Okay. Two hands, please. We don't want to drop the egg. There we go. Take it to daddy. Don't run. Walk, walk, walk. It's time to eat. No, I still need to go with the plant. I want one. Oh, no, no, Lily. Lily, two hands, please. Two hands with the egg. Mom, have to be very careful with it. Oh, well, Daddy said we need to go in right now, so let's go in. We'll do it after dinner. So we have nine chickens, and we have been very consistently getting nine eggs. Yay! And the six eggs, the six little chickens, will hopefully lay in another, you know, two or three months. Did you see that? Yeah, we, got nine. we got nine eggs. Give me five. Yay! Yay. That's two. That's, That's two eggs in a row. That's good. Lots. Our chickens are being very good little chickens. Yes, they are. Or big. So here's the salad that we made, and we've got kale and spinach and yummy. Oh, that looks so good, Art. Oh. Then we have some cornbread, and then we like to call this, well, soup. Soup from the kitchen. Everything in the refrigerator hopped into that pot and turned into soup. And this is our second night of actually having that. So, looks good. Thank you everyone for your help. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.